Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today I want to bring you an update to a video that we did a little while back, and that is on Debian doing some non-free software. And it raised a little bit of a stink, and uh, we released a video about nine months ago on our supporters stream where we examined this uh, particular topic. And um, what I want to do today is I want to bring you a little bit of an update. I want to show you the current progress on Debian 12 and what they are going to do. So uh, just to bring you up to speed, we had this discussion on our supporters streams. And uh, the question was, is Debian going non-free? As some debate was put out about, should we have non-free software available in the default Debian builds. Now, note, you can get a Debian build that has the non-free and the contributor uh, repos enabled by default out of the box, and you might use that if you had some newer hardware, something that you needed a later firmware option. And this is what was proposed to uh, get things working. Then the question becomes, what's free, what's non-free, how does all of this work? And that's a measure of debate, but at this time we did not have a lot of information about that. So what I wanted to do here is go back and look at the what's new in uh, the Debian 12. And what I did here is I actually went ahead and I first installed the, um, I installed our, our Debian 12 onto a virtual box. And uh, as I did that, um, I decided I'd go ahead and look at what's new. And uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. Um, before we uh, do that, though, let me uh, get this off the page. This is why I absolutely hate GNOME. Like, minimize the stupid window. All right, fine. We're just going to close it. We'll refine that later. All right. Um, so I installed Debian and uh, this Debian with GNOME and... Inside of here, let's, you know, they're not going to see anything significantly different uh, inside of this. Now, I did notice one thing in here that I haven't seen before, although admittedly I don't run a Debian a lot and I definitely don't generally run Debian on GNOME. But when you wanted to enable the non free repositories, you used to go into the terminal and you'd manually update the apt sources by adding the uh, contributor and the non free. Now, uh, what they actually have here, and this might be something part of the GNOME software store. I don't know. This is the box that pops up. I can actually toggle these guys on, and that's going to enable you to enable the non-free and the contributors um, without going in doing that. So you have uh, that option there. Now, this is how it is default, and this brings us to what they did with their dependencies. So we're going to go ahead and get to that in just a moment. We're going to just close that. And uh, first, I'm going to show you the brief settings in here and inside of our About system. Then we actually have uh, GNOME 43. We're running on Wayland. And uh, you can see everything else inside of this. Now, this did actually work with my screen resolutions in VirtualBox, which is something that we've had problems with in the past. You used to have to install the, uh, the VirtualBox guest editions in order to get good full screen support. So far, it's working pretty well uh, in this. And so the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and pull that window back up in uh, Crappy Fox. Um, so let's go ahead and just restore the previous session. Here's the screen we had, which has the what's new in Debian 12. So, of course, the supported architectures, we still have 32-bit and 64-bit support. We have a number of ARM support. We have IBM System Z support, PowerPC. So basically, Debian supports effectively everything. That's good. Nothing has changed. Here's your main archive areas that if you've worked with Debian for a long time, you would be very familiar with these. The main, uh, the main it gives is your main Debian uh, distribution, uh, which also includes your security, I believe. Then you have your contrib as the supplemental packages. And then you have the non-free supplemental packages worked that do not comply with the uh, basic free and open source system. Now, the point of contention was the big 
big problem with Debian sometimes is it doesn't work quite as well on newer hardware. And to solve that problem, what they started to do, now this was the general resolution about non-free. This is the point of dissension that we had in the video that we talked about earlier. The Debian official media may include firmware that is otherwise not part of the Debian system to enable the use of Debian with hardware that requires such firmware. So the question is, how do we enable the non-free firmware for people who need it, but not have all of the non-free options available because we want to have that. Well, what they did is they did not explicitly mention it at the time in the social contract or the Debian policy. A new archive area was introduced, making it possible to separate non-free firmware from other non-free packages. So now we have another system called non-free firmware. So now we have our non-free and our non-free firmware where your firmware is only going to cover the firmware needed to get your your uh, hardware working without having any other uh, any other software. And this is a good, really, really good compromise because the big concern we have is that do we want to, I want to have a functional system, but I may not want to have all sorts of proprietary software available to me. And I think that this is a pretty good way around that. So that's what they've done is they have uh, done that. So if we go back up to our uh, software um, system again, what you'll see inside of that is you'll see this middle option there is the non-DSSG Debian Foundation, is that Debian's Foundation um, social contract, I think it is. <clears throat> um, so firmware for hardware support. Now, I did not see the option explicitly on install allowing me to check or uncheck this, it might be there and I might have missed it. Um, the installer looked much the same and I was more distracted by the fact that part of way through my install, my mouse stopped working. And so I was using the keyboard and I might have missed it. I'll go back to look at the installation process, which I recorded, and I'll see if that is an option to select or not select. But here's your source code. Here's your officially supported. It's also possible that it got enabled when I said, yes, go onto the internet to upgrade all packages. That's also possible. That was an option that they asked me for. So this overall is a really, really good compromise to that. I, I do like that. And uh, of course, all of the systems are the same. Uh, GNOME 43, Plasma 527, LXDE 11, LXQT 120, Matei 126, XFCE 417. There's Cinnamon. I didn't see which version is in Cinnamon. And then we have a nice comparative table here. Here's some of your more common packages, the old version and Bullseye and the new version, the upcoming uh, Bookworm, so you can see some of the changes. Mostly I was interested in the PHP, as a lot of my servers right now uh, are yelling at me like, you're running an updated PHP! Um, that's going to be resolved as soon as this comes out, and I push my install over there, and hopefully nothing else breaks. <laughs> but uh, we'll see what happens when this officially comes out. And my favorite part about the What's New in Debian is section 2.3.2, which simply says something, and it says text. Absolutely amazing update. So uh, we'll get a chance to see what that guy looks like. Last thing I want to do here is uh, I'm going to go ahead and look in the terminal real quick. And let's go into Etsy and apt. I think we need to go into the software. I think it's the sources list D. And oh, maybe not that one. I should have looked at this before I started the video. Let's look at nano sources list. And here we can see here, uh, Bookworm is your main software. Here's your main and here's your non-free dash firmware. So if I wanted to remove the non-free dash firmware, I can just go ahead and remove these guys out. And from each one of the lines, do some pseudo apt updates, and then that should get that guy fixed. So there is what is up with uh, Debian with their non-free software in the uh, new version coming up. It's not that they're going to open up Debian to all of the non-free software. It's that they are going to add an extra repository to get hardware working, but not have all the proprietary software. I think that that's a good reasonable compromise to get a good function computer without that. And the last thing is... Is it inside of the installer to be able to say, yes, I want to use that or no, I don't. So Tom from the production room here.
So I looked into this a little bit, and as of right now, now this is still Debian 11, but as of right now, you can get the official CD DVD images with stable release or the unofficial CD DVD images for stable with non-free firmware included. So my guess is this is exactly how it's going to be. So this guy here, we'll go ahead and click on this. Um, so this guy here is going to give us an image that is uh, probably has that firmware. Let me go ahead and find the United States Mirror real quick and click on the Debian CD. Here's the current live. Here's the 11.7 live. Let's look at what the current live has to say. 64 ISO hybrid. So here's your... Uh, Debian Live. So these guys here are going to contain that extra firmware. So it does not appear as though it says it directly inside of your package build, but that's where I got to those. So presumably that's going to be the case. Now I did walk through my installation method here and uh, I did not see anything that was um, that looked like it gave me the option to select. The only spots that I saw are the part where it asked me if I wanted to go on the internet and download the latest mirrors. Um, but other than that, everything else was exactly the same as installing Debian in the past. That is what is yet to be seen. And uh, I'll look at my installation. And if I did, if it's there, I'll go ahead and show it on the screen here so you can see where that option is or where it could be. With that, thank you for watching, everybody. And uh, the last thing I'm going to highlight here real quick is... Uh, this video is one of the videos brought to you by Malleable Computers. So you can head on over here if you want a good high-performance custom Linux laptop. You can jump on over here. And then, of course, you can choose a variety of Linux distributions. This does seem to change on a regular basis. We have Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Ubuntu Cinnamon, and Linux Mint. Of course, you can pay the extra licensing fees if you want Windows on there for some reason. Uh, but you can go ahead and head on over to Malleable Computers, tlm.li forward slash Malleable. You can find that uh, link in the description. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.